Hello and welcome in this section of process model. So in this section we will be learning about process model and in various lectures we will see how we can understand the process model and how we can understand the smart services, how we can use smart services, how we can debug things. So let's get started and uh, we can start by creating a process model, a new process model and I need, just need to click on this new object and here I'm again having two options create from scratch and duplicate existing process model. So again, if we already have some process model which we wanted to reuse, then we can do it. Otherwise, we can create from scratch. And the naming convention is very simple. We can also give spaces because uh, the process model we cannot access direct. We need a constant to access our process model, right? So let's add this process model. So this is my first process model. So I will just put this name and I'm give the description as testing and I can store the process model in the process model folder. Now I need to create it and give the permission. So we can modify a process model in the process modeler and uh, we can open multiple process model at the same time and we can modify each of them and after doing after completing everything we can save and publish the process model so you can see this is an empty process model with only start node and end node right so these are called nodes and right now these two nodes are attached to each other and there is nothing in between in this line right you can drag and drop these nodes and you can place it wherever you want right so let's understand the process model first because uh, there are a lot of things in this process model and uh, we can work around you can see they, this is the analyst view and there are few options which is not available in analyst view so we'll be always be working in a designer view in the designer view we will be having everything like process instances and uh, activity exceptions and all these things right and this small icon you can see this is the properties of this process model so let's click on this icon and let's understand the properties of this process model so you can see we are inside the general tab and this is created on at this date last modified at this date and we can choose whatever languages we wanted to choose and we can configure the settings so here we have process model id and the process model uuid so it's it's the unique id of each and every process model in this environment and this uuid is also a unique id but it's alphanumeric long id right we can use wherever is required like we can we are we wanted to search this object then we can use id as well as we can use uuid also right so we, after that we have process model name the static name which we have given here whenever we will be creating the process model and the description and process display name so this is important because we have two kind of name here you can see we have process model name and process display name so what is the difference between both of them it's a basic thing right in interviews also they will ask you about this question so the difference is this process display name is the process instance name which we will be seeing inside the monitoring tab right so whenever a process model will be triggered then how we can take a look at the instances we need to go inside the monitoring and we need to check the process activity so you can see this is empty so whenever i will be triggering any process model in my application then i can see that instance here and we can see the process with errors and lot of things we can discover so we will see this later on currently this is empty let's get back to the application we have process display name which is dynamic i can use the expression editor and i can put whatever i want here this is the expression editor the priority email attachment public zones public events time zone so time zone is uh, i can select whatever time zone i want it to be uh, the details will be coming coming accordingly according to this time zone the created by and updated by and uh, after this basic informations we have the variable so this is the place where we will be having all the process variables right and how we can access the process variable by using pv bank so let's try and let's create one process variable so i will name this as test test variable and the type we can select currently the text is selected but i can select anything right i can also select my custom data type so previously we have created one custom data type so i will try to select that so this is et expense data right 
and the value if we wanted to give some by default value then we can give it here otherwise we don't have to and then um, we can make this variable as a parameter as required so you can see if i'll make this as a parameter then this required is enabled because when we will be passing some parameter from outside this process model then we can also make make it as a required so if the user will not pass the parameter then the process model will give the error and we can make this variable as multiple and we can also hide it but not now if the parameter if the variable is not as a parameter then we can hide this parameter hide this process variable from the parent process so we will be understanding this concept of parent and child process sub process later on and let's remove these things and let's move forward i will be creating this process variable and i can delete it i can i can see all the settings here and i can add multiple process variables and whenever we will be creating a process model if we are not using it then it's better to delete it right it's the best practice to only just create that elements which we are using not create uselessly the process variables so these are my variable list and then we have process start form so this is quite interesting because uh, and this is a form we in this place we can attach a form itself right to start the process with so you can see the currently the start node is empty it's a empty circle but when i try to add one interface here so let's do one thing let's add the interface which we have built for our application so if i'll go back into the build and this interface we have right so i can select the interface here et new expense form and i got one pop up the pop up is saying that do you want to automatically create process parameters to match your interface inputs so what it will do whenever i will click on yes then if i have process in, inside that interface i have some rule inputs then that rule inputs will be automatically mapped with the process variables and currently i don't have any process variable similar to the rule inputs so it will create automatically so you can see if i click on yes then these are the rule inputs coming from interface right and these are the process variables which got automatically created because i was i have selected yes and if i go in the variable list you can see all these variables are automatically coming right cancel it was not there previously so this is my process start form i can select it if i want to start this process with a form we'll see that when we debug it and if i try to click yes okay and you can see now this start node is having some kind of form in between it's the process start form right and um, after process start form we have deadline deadline is the want if we wanted to set some deadline for this process model the process model instance then we can enable this deadline right and um, here this is the expression that we can add whatever minutes is required or whatever whatever hours is required we can select from this drop down and we have alerts alerts is basically if this process instance is having some issues or anything related to the error then it will automatically alert the user we can select whatever kind of alert we want either we want to select the user or um, we wanted to notify some kind of groups or users or we wanted to create some expression so it will alert automatically accordingly whatever i will choose and the last is data management this is also very important because um, whenever the instance will be created in appian it will take up some memory right so we don't have to uselessly uh, write this storage or fill out this cloud storage fully with all the that instances so we will be removing or we will be archiving the process instances right so we can set some criteria according to the application that uh, um, this one will be archived after 7 days or uh, maybe 3 if required right so whatever the application admin will decide so we can choose it and it will archive or if i wanted to delete this process then we can choose this option right or system by default will be 7 days archival so this these are all the properties of this process model variables process start form deadline alert and data management so after doing all the configuration of properties we will design the process model and currently we have chosen a start form so after, for example my process model is complete now right so what i need to do after that i need to save it right and while debugging it we can save it but if we want that the changes will reflect everywhere in the environment then we need to publish it save and publish 
so this is this will create a new version of the process model whenever we will be publishing it it will create a new version so in the process model also we can see the versions by going in this option and we can see the previous versions we can load we can delete or we can save a new version with that so this is the basic properties of a process model and let's see how to debug a process model so i just need to go inside file and start process for debugging so this will start the debugging of this form right and you can see this is completed because there is nothing in between there was one form which got pop up i have cancelled it so that's all i have done here and this is the debugging it's in the monitoring and th this is one way to see the monitoring i can also go inside the monitoring tab again and here you can see this is completed this instance i can click it again and it will take me to the monitoring or one more way is there i can go inside the process instance list and i can see whatever the process instance list is there i can select all process instance and there is one status is completed is started by this started time this and that's all so this is how we can debug it and we can use these uh, options like process instances properties and other options whatever i wanted to choose for example we wanted to describe this process model some text we wanted to put in this design then we can um, use this annotation we can put the annotation also here let's say test right so this is just to describe notes if you wanted to describe something related to notes then we can do it and i can also attach these things for example i wanted to attach with this one so this is like the, we can under, easily understand that this what, what's the meaning of this note right and uh, i just need to drag and drop on the line to attach elements right and this one and i need to click on shift then i will get this option and then i can connect these these things so if i will be having one script task here i can connect it like this pressing shift and releasing the mouse and pressing shift again and releasing the cursor that's all right so this is how we can design and we can use these drag and drop functionalities and let's get into the process model in the next lecture where we'll be seeing how we can write the data into the db and then we also understand these workflow items right and the automation smart services so let's see that thing inside next lecture